A film charting the life of Tony De Vee, one of dance music's biggest names, will be premiered in Birmingham later. This is this is a story from earlier in the week on on BBC West Midlands. Have you spotted it yet? Well, part of the screening of Don't Ever Stop takes place at the Midlands Arts Centre in Cannon Hill Park. A London premiere was last night, by the way. Born in Kidderminster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Devee made his name at the Nightingale Club in Birmingham in the late 1980s and then went on to DJ at iconic clubs like London's Heaven. Um, and this film is, is, is very special for a whole heap of reasons that we will now explore. Firstly, with Tony's sister Jane, Jane Parks, who I should say is, is, is a great friend of mine, and I also had the enormous privilege of dancing to Tony at, at Heaven back in what the kids like to call the day. Um, this is bonkers. It really is, yes. Something I never thought would happen. Yeah. Why? Why are people still so enamoured of your late brother? I genuinely really don't know. It's just, I just don't know. Twenty-five years ago, he died. So he had a blue plaque last year. Um, first one of the so-called superstar DJs to get one. Yes. Um, and it's on the Custer Factory wall in Birmingham. Ridiculous. So, uh, and I thought that's the pinnacle. That's it. And then. This has come along, and uh, I can't quite believe it. Actually, it's been an absolute roller coaster ride of emotions. Being proud, it's just been a wonderful experience. T tell me about the first time you saw the film. Tell me. Tell me. Well, I didn't see it before. I could have done, but I saw it on Monday with everyone else. So, to be fair, we cried all the way through, basically. <laughs> um, and then, right at the end, we stood up. Uh, me and my my daughter and my son and my husband were there and we stood up and thought oh good I can dry my eyes now and um, go and have a drink and a lady came across to me and she said hello Jane do you remember me and I said oh no she said I was one of the nurses that nursed Tony when he was in hospital of course we just all burst into tears again <laughs> she'd, come, she'd come on her own to see it. and she said it was wonderful film and everything they said about him in the film she said was true he was a lovely man so that really made my night on Monday at oh, the premiere I bet it did I bet it did because he, he I mean for, for, for a DJ it was an odd way to actually have connections with people beyond the dance floor I don't know how he did that I don't know how people felt they knew him when yeah well, at the time, back in the 90s, it was straight clubs, gay clubs. Yeah. And this was one of the main reasons he got um, his blue plaque, because sort of he mixed the crowds. Yeah. Um, the gay and straight crowds mixed then, because he was a gay, openly gay DJ playing in the straight clubs. So the gay people went to the straight clubs and it mixed all of a sudden in the 90s. It mixed and I don't think he was aware that he did that, but he really did do that. And so I think that's he did a it for me. Achievement. He did it for me before I knew he was from Kidderminster and before before I knew you as well. So yes. I mean, completely independently yeah. of any personal connections, yeah. it was yeah. the first time I went to a gay club. Yeah, you went to trade, heaven. didn't you? Oh, well, I went yes. to trade as well. Yes, yeah, of yes. course. Yeah. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> let's have, let's have a, let's, before things get. Let's have a little listen to a trailer for the film, and then we'll speak to um, Stuart Pollitt, who directed it. You would know Tony in the first record. It was like a magic happened. The most, to me, electrified DJ that has ever walked the planet. Are we fans of Tony DeVay? We are top boys. He is the man. He's the god. We worship him. I would be in the DJ booth and God love him. He never told me to f off. <laughs> he was a young kid. Yeah, I thought to myself, yeah, this kid's got talent. And Tony took a shine to him. We were just mad about the music, mad about Tony. <laughs> With me. He created a kind of mood, a sound, uh, almost a movement. We knew when he was on because it was going to overdrive. I can feel that in my spine. Um, Stuart Pollitt, you, you directed this documentary. What, 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 you weren't there, were you? You look far too young. <laughs> Not quite, James. I, I was aware of Tony. I wasn't old enough to actually get into the to the various clubs that you're talking about. Um, uh, neither was my uh, co-producer Phil, but he was a huge fan of that scene, and he he tells the story from the early 2000s where he was in a club and they played records from Tony, and there were these stories going around about this sort of mythical DJ who was on the cusp of becoming the biggest in the world and then died. Yeah. Um, and there was also this story about his mentor, someone who who he helped called Fergie, yeah. who was then one of the biggest DJs in the UK in this point in the early 2000s. And there was this story about the, the two of them that my co-producer was told 20 years ago and always had in his mind as something that would make 
a film. Um, and we, having worked for the BBC for a long time as staff, we set up our own company four or five years ago, um, which amongst other sort of things does give you the freedom to explore stories that you want to tell. And so we worked on this and built up the contacts, thankfully through Jane, um, to try and develop that story. And Fergie was really keen to talk about what happened with Tony and how their relationship uh, sort of changed and developed um, and, and produced for us what I think is really amazing sort of human story beyond the music and, and, and the scene and everything like that. It's a story of two people, yes. two different generations helping each other. Uh, what's the plan for the film? What are you hoping will happen next? So we've had some really good reception at both the premieres this week. Both of them sold out. Um, hugely positive uh, reaction. We've got a couple of screenings in, in Birmingham next week as well. Uh, then we're planning to take it uh, to more cinemas around the country, hopefully uh, early next year. And then potentially with a bit of luck, um, get it onto uh, you know broadcaster or a streamer. Because obviously when you make something like this, you want as many people as possible uh, to be able to see it and, and hopefully enjoy it. So that's the aim and that's the ambition. How can people fo- keep track of the tale, Stuart? How can people follow so, what's going uh, Yeah, on? absolutely. We've got our website, Tony DeVee Film dot com um and on social media as well so we will update on there everything when there's next screenings and next opportunities for people to to view it and buy tickets so if they they can log on to the website or, or follow us on social media tony de v film top, top man and of course uh, the v is spelt v-i-t which any any former ravers will not need me to point out that people coming to it a little newer may may, may need it Stuart, thank you and good luck and congratulations. Um, uh, don't ever stop. It's, it's, it's just growing now. The story's only just started. Briefly, Jane, how, how did he get into DJing? Because, you know, I, I was in my bedroom in Kidderminster <laughs> at about the same time and I certainly yes. wasn't doing any DJing. Well, he started when he was at school, really. He just had a mobile disco. Go around Kidderminster yeah. doing weddings and stuff. He didn't do the roller disco, did he? Ever up near Wire Glades. <laughs> oh no, I think he was a bit old for that. <laughs> <laughs> and it just he just he just had a, a Yeah, a proper so when gift. he came out as gay, he moved to Birmingham really. So he then got a residency at the the Nightingale, which was yeah. the big gay club in Birmingham. And it went from there really. They sort of told him to tone his music down and so he wouldn't, so they got rid of him and it did him a huge favour really, because then all this exploded on the dance scene, you know, in the nineties and he was one of those at the forefront of that. So it was uh, a great time for and, him. And, and finally, what, what what would he make of all this oh, fuss? God. He'd be so embarrassed by it all. He was really <laughs> humble, but secretly he'd love it. He would love it. <laughs> you can find out more about Don't Ever Stop by following that, uh, uh, that social media and website, TonyDeVeeFilm.com. Jane, thank you so much. It's lovely to see you. Thank um, you. You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC. We may take a little bit more because, in fact, you know, Stuart talking about finding the wherewithal to give up the regular paycheck and start your own company ties in a little with what we were discussing before. Um, this item and I'm also drawn to a story about children no longer walking to school for reasons that I will explain to you after this.